but important that y'all notice because not only do you need to know this for the exam, like everybody get all worked up about this exam, like, oh, I just need to pass the exam. No, you need to work with this too once you pass this exam. Like this is stuff you need to do every day. If you don't have leadership buy-in, it's probably not gonna go well. And if it does go well, you're gonna be standing there alone grinding your ass off trying to do it by yourself. It is what it is, child. Hey y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind HR. Now this video is going to be a comparison of what has changed, particularly with the Sherm material from 2022 to 2023. So if you wanna know, Tamika, what were some of the changes between the material for Sherm 2022 study material and 2023 study material, then definitely keep watching. So this makes my third or fourth year creating these notes overall. Now this makes only my second or third creating them for the public, like for anyone to be able to buy them, sell them, use them. But each year I do a comparison between the materials from one year to the next. And so I've done that video before on what changed from 2021 to 2022. Now we're gonna talk about what changed from 2022 to 2023. And it's a lot, I wasn't expecting as much. More so like tedious stuff, not necessarily a big picture on the materials. So I'm just gonna run through notes because as I was creating the new notes, I was just like writing stuff down. And so it's kind of all over the place. I'm gonna, I try to keep it as, as in order as I can, but it is what it is, child. I literally just finished the last bit of those notes. I still have more to do. So they're not gonna be available until the 24th. Matter of fact, let me check that date. Make sure I'm lying. Yeah, HR's new study materials, the study notes for your HR certification is gonna be available Wednesday on March 24th. So I'll go live several times up until these notes are available, definitely the night before. If you wanna get a discount, a discount on the new notes, not the old notes, it's only gonna be one day. Literally on the 24th is the only day that you're gonna be able to use this discount code. Then definitely get on my email list because only folks on my email list getting a discount code. Now let's talk about the differences between the two because I really already meant to start that already. So so overall, the difference is, is that they kind of reorganize the same material. Some things are just moved to a new section, but it's literally the same material. One of the big things is like DEI was already in the law section and it was pretty detailed in the law section. They've moved it to the people section. That's one example. They moved around or made some new reference points with like more modern times. So now instead of them talking about going into the office and things like that, I've noticed that a lot of references, a lot of the, the information that connects it back to like everyday work has all been about virtual or online or just a lot of like the dynamics has really been as it's, it's existed before 2020 but a lot of the dynamics that became like our norm since 2020 for so many companies so like doing virtual onboarding they're talking about a lot more technology how you can use this technology being strategic with this technology a lot of mergers and acquisitions and more detail on how HR impacts that a lot of things have just moved around so the motivation styles and the theories for HR leaders have been a little bit different. What you're going to do and the concept that they're applying those motivational theories or the motivational style or the theories to, it's still the same concept. It's still the same information. They give that motivational stuff or those theories or those overviews or those concepts to help you understand that information and everyday knowledge. The, st the stuff that you need to know is still the same, guys. It's still the same. Don't get excited. The nice thing is that they provide more examples that match current times. So I guess that kind of goes with the new reference points. I noticed that the examples are more modern modernized too. So I'm happy to definitely see that. There's an additional emphasis on ethics within HR pros and their work. And I think that that's amazing. The ethics section wasn't as detailed before. Now they go into a lot more detail because we get this immediate authority and it feels like authority when you're working in HR. You're the decision maker. People are coming to you, things like that. And I think it was important from the hone in on ethics more. So I was happy to see that that got to be far more detailed than it was in the past. But some new concepts were authenticity, diversity, different phases of technology and different adding on more with diversity and like online recruiting strategies. All of those things were were kind of new. They like had like a one-liner or two in the years before or last year, 
But in this year for 2023, I noticed that it went in a lot more detail and I was happy about that. I keep saying diversity because it was overwhelming to see how much they've expounded on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So it went into far more details with DEI, um, employee engagement, technology management, and a global workforce. So if you're taking SHRM information, then the global information or global workforce is gonna be important to you. As I said in the CP versus PHR and the SCHR and the SCP videos, <laughs> you only need to know this global information if you're going to sit for a SHRM exam. Otherwise, you're kind of okay. Unless you say, okay, Tamika, I'm not doing the SPHR, the PHR, the APHR. I'm doing the GPHR. Then this global information is going to be helpful to you. If you're not doing the GPHR for HRCI, then you only need to notice if you're sitting for a SHRM exam. I just noticed one more thing. There was more variation added to one area specifically, and it was primarily organizational effectiveness and development. And it was just talking about how organizations are designed and the strategy that HR needs to put in for those organizations, I thought that was good. That's very, very, that's very, very global because you don't have to do as much organizational design and development when you're with a company that's not really, really changing. A lot of these global companies are constantly changing for various reasons, right? And, and national companies, it's good for national companies too. But there was a lot more variation added there that took me a lot more time. The people section was a lot more detailed, so that took me a lot more time too um, because it's almost like I'm trying to make sure I know this information too because it's not like repetitive of what was last year. So you guys want to pay special emphasis on the people section because they've moved some stuff around, mainly like some of your laws and DEI and like online management of people. Now, the next section that is different, completely different from previous years is a competency section. The competency section is far more detailed than it was last year. The competency section kind of really irritate my nerve because I think people already get confused about competencies, period. So my plan was to go ahead and do a video all on what a competency is. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't done that yet. If you want me to do a video all on what competencies is, then put it in the comments and I'll, I'll put it on my list. But I feel like it was helpful to see it, you know, expand it more, but it was a little bit like, oh, yeah, now y'all finally going into these details that you probably should have gone into a long time ago. Now, some things that were similar from 2022 to 2023 is obviously still the people section. The people section got longer and it's a little bit more detailed in those areas that I already talked about, but it's still the same. Um, the same thing for workplace section that includes all of your laws and things like that. That's so pretty much stay the same too. Now, your organizational section or organization section are pretty much damn near the same as 2022. So I put extra emphasis on the people section and the workplace section. So some of the things with that were absolutely the same from 2022 and I think is super duper important that y'all notice because not only do you need to know this for the exam, like everybody get all worked up about this exam, like, oh, I just need to pass the exam. No, you need to work with this too once you pass this exam. Like this is stuff you need to do every day. So this ain't just a work with something you're doing like in high school or college. Like this is gonna be applied to everyday life. I was so happy to see that some of the things that say the same was a big focus on leadership buy-in. Y'all always asking me different questions questions, especially with the career mentoring. People will ask me different questions. Well, should I do this? Should I do that? If you don't have leadership buy-in, it's probably not going to go well. And if it does go well, you're going to be standing there alone, grinding your ass off, trying to do it by yourself. Get leadership buy-in. Get your manager, your leaders, your C-suite teams, all the managers that's working across the organization to understand your concept, understand the goal, understand how it connects with the company strategy, how it connects with the company goals, how it's going to make the organization better, easier, whatever. So that they can say, oh, I like this. I agree. And they're going to give you buy-in by supporting your initiatives, by making the employee mandated to attend your events, by making your employee come to you for resources about these things, by making them use your resources when they ask about those things. You always want to get your leadership buy-in. So I was so happy to see that they had a big focus on that throughout their all of the materials. Another similarity was there wasn't very many changes in people. Like some of the, th the cha changes that I already told you is what's there, right? But it wasn't like or overhaul of everything. So primarily your DEI section, your leadership navigation, things like that were like the things that changed because obviously times have changed now. Since 2020, we kind of, our leaders are thinking differently. They're understanding that HR is a strategic partner more and things like that. 
But overall, people was the same. So when we talk about recruiting, we talk about benefits, we talk about total rewards, all of those things definitely stayed the same. They just included a lot more modern stuff, like how to use technology to man to get metrics to see if whatever initiative you're doing is really, really good, things like that. So that was super duper helpful to see that people overall stayed the same. There was just more emphasis of information added on that caught up with current times, which is good. And then the last thing that was the same is that all the laws were the same, nothing new. So you're primarily going to talk about your federal laws, so you don't have to worry about those state or local laws unless you're taking like a California specific exam. But it was really good to see that they, those laws stayed the same. Went into more detail on some DEI laws and like how times have changed with laws and technology over time, like the timeline of it all to help you kind of build in that concept. But overall, it was exactly the same. So that was super duper helpful. So these are the changes from 2022 to 2023. Y'all, I just created over 200 pages of notes for you guys. So I'm telling you what I know. And I obviously compared them with what I had last year, which was 216 pages from 2022 notes. So I want you to know that this is information coming directly from me. I didn't get this from a resource. HRCI didn't tell me, Sherm didn't tell me, no one else told me. This is what I went through. And for myself so I hope you found this helpful <laughs> it wasn't easy it was a lot of work but it was because I really want you guys to like know which areas to kind of spend some time on or to focus on some of you because I mean all of you because it's your first time taking an exam unless you've taken it before and you're retaking it you don't even gonna notice these changes because all the information is new to you but I know people want to know changes okay done off my soapbox for those of you who are new and you find my channel for the very first time I got tons of videos that can help you through this certification so just go to my HR certification playlist and pick and choose what you need. Watch a couple of them. And, and, and if I'm hitting on stuff every single goddamn video, I want you to do me a favor and subscribe. I'm not even going to bother you with subscribing right now. But if you're watching to this point, hit the like button. That doesn't make you subscribe. It just helps my channel to grow. It helps YouTube to know that I'm making the right thing. And it also helps me to know that I'm making the right material, the right content. For those of you who are returning, did y'all find this helpful? Like, did I waste time creating this video? Because you're not seeing the one last year and you see so many of my videos. Let me know if you found this helpful. That'll super duper help, be helpful to me. Um, yeah, let me know. <laughs> I just can't wait to see all of y'all on the next video. I really